Good morning, no. Bobby. Just got her plugged in. Hey, nice shoes. Those are my shoes. They're really dirty, too. Mm -hmm. Too early for this? Mm -hmm. I understand. This is gonna be our first ripper. Like, actual ripper. If we can get her plugged in. I'm all nervous. What if she blows? Mm -hmm. what's, what's more anxiety inducing? The first start or the first pull? The I don't first know. Pull. You think this will go? Sheesh. Shit. That should probably data log it. Kind of forgot about that. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is the day, we're ripping it. We're sending it to the moon, like Dogecoin, like Bitcoin. So first off, we got a two little two minute data log and then we're gonna go do a ripper. And I think we're doing the typical third gear, but I think we're only going to like five or six K right now. I do know it's lean. Like I've been watching the AFRs, she's a little bit lean, but it's okay. We are doing, oh, we're going to 7K. Ooh, that's scary. We have 100 and like 20 miles on the build. It's a little early to be sending it this hard, but 500 miles is too much. I can't handle that. So if it blow, it's not, it'll be all right. I know she's, she's broken in. She ain't smoking, rings are seated, good compression, we'll be all right. Famous last words. I do need to <clears throat> get a boost gauge on here. I have one but it's not wired up or anything. But AFR's oil pressure, a little more important than boost. I don't have a pod for the boost gauge. I got something in the works though, so I'll show you guys that maybe later today. Maybe we'll get her wired up today, huh, Bobby? Yeah, Devin. And for the first time ever, I parked the car overnight. She sat, I rolled it back just a minute ago, and there was no oil leaks on the ground. It's pretty nuts. That's just unbelievable. It's just crazy. I know, how did I build a car that didn't leak? Wait, it did leak, but I fixed it all. In my car even leaks. No, it doesn't. There's a little oil leak. Where? We've only been talking about it for ages now. Oh yeah, your turbo. <laughs> I mean your tire. What? Your tire's leaking oil. It should be on like 10 or 15 pounds right now. I'm gonna go look at what that was. I should probably get a boost gauge in here. I'm surprised it held though. Well, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe it was like 10 pounds, but it felt like it was a lot. Oh. That 
That's a ripper. Watch, I showed the smoke. That was a lot of smoke. Yeah, I know. Ugh, That's good. crazy. Why did it blow so much smoke? It's black though. That's good. I wish I was more stable. Oh my lord. Little update. We hit 36 PSI. I think that was around like 14, 15 armor horsepower. It's quite a bit. She went sideways. Um, compressor housing line that runs to the to the three port solenoid was off. So I don't think that would have caused the overboost issue. It may have. So I put that back on. We're gonna go do a quick little rip, see if it's fixed. If it's not, we're gonna swap A and B on the three port solenoid because A and B both run to the wastegate. So we can actually just swap it on the wastegate. That might be backwards, I'm not really sure. It's a GM three port, not a Grim Speed. So we're gonna swap that, see if it fixes it. If not, then we're gonna have, I feel like I'm getting too technical. We're just gonna figure it out, why it's hitting 36 PSI. Long story short, if it's nothing, how it's set up wrong, we're just gonna have to swap out the springs in the waste kit itself. Bobby has a question. My question to you is, so we just need to figure it out and then we'll go over what's wrong with it. Sure, you have an egg in your teeth. <laughs> I mean, technically speaking, it's kind of fast. She doesn't have a rod knock yet, that's good. <laughs> Cute. That's crazy that it, we made, we just made 2,000 wheel horsepower with this car. It's nuts, absolutely nuts. Hey. More like 120. Real school is probably like 1800, but. What are you talking about, honey? You're crazy. It was 360 PSI, a boost. No, it wasn't. No, it was. It was 36. No, said. 360. Oh. Yeah. That's what happens when you, uh, if you take out the radio, <laughs> you just get a lot of boost. Am I retarded? We should tell it to Jamie. She'd probably be like, oh yeah. <laughs> She'd say, oh yeah. I didn't fix it. Whoa. That was fast. Okay, well I'm gonna flip the lines on the wastegate and then see. see what that does. Well usually when you hook up a wastegate backwards, and this is all internal, when I've done it backwards, you won't build any boost. You'll build like five PSI. Oh. But let me flip it real quick. He likes my Evo. I like people that like Evos. I didn't fix it. Is that better? Yeah, I mean, yes. Still pretty, pretty fast. No, that's the same. Same. I didn't fix it. Okay, we tried a few things with the wastegate, how it's plumbed. Um, we even tried pulling lines off, so running just one to the to the side and leaving the top vent atmosphere. And no matter what we do, we're having some serious boost. So we gotta head to the shop and swap out the springs to a lighter spring. All right, we made it into the shop. I'm gonna go ahead, pop off the top part of the wastegate and see what springs are actually in there. We never pulled it apart. We were just kind of assuming that it had the 14 PSI springs in there or four, either 14 or 15 PSI springs based off of what else was included in the kit. So let's pull it apart, see what's going on, figure out why the hell this thing's making way too much sauce. Never thought I would say that, but she is definitely making the sauce. So we were correct, it had the red and the green in there and those two together would be 15 PSI. We're gonna go ahead and install the red and the natural, which is gonna give us about seven PSI. I believe our target boost was supposed to be around like 18, 19 PSI before and it's hitting 36. So we'll throw those in and see what happens. I do need to wire up a boost controller though as well so I can actually monitor it without going and looking at the data log. Like actually watch it as we're doing a ripper. So I've been wanting to do something like this for a while. Might be kind of cool if we can get it figured out. I picked up this digital readout boost gauge and I want to put this thing where the factory clock is. I've seen someone else do this. Was his name Lee? Let me look it up real quick. Cause I need to watch this video to see exactly what he did. His name is Lee Lockwood, how to turn your clock into a boost gauge. 
So shout out to him. I'm gonna watch his video, kind of figure out what exactly he did. But I just picked up the super cheap boost gauge on eBay. I've had it laying around. I was gonna do this on the black eBay and not, never got around to it. So we're gonna do it on the blue car. And I think it's a good opportunity to do it right now because we need a boost gauge in the car either way. So I think it'd be cool. Let me see if I can figure it out. And if I can, I'll show you guys what I did. Okay, we have the gauge completely torn down to pretty much just like the digital readout and the motherboard. Oops, and then the clock is torn apart as well. So this is what we need to fit our, that just that digital part into. We are gonna have to trim, see those black lines I made. We gotta cut that right there. I'm hoping though that when we cut this thing, it doesn't just completely destroy it. And if it does, oh well, we'll just have to order a different boost gauge and try again. But yeah, let's go ahead and cut on those lines so it fits into our clock. This is gonna be so sick if we can actually figure this out. All right, my friends, we got it to fit. Let's connect it back to the motherboard, throw some power to this thing and see if it still works. I'll be stoked if it does. Unfortunately, we killed the gauge. Only half of it works. So something that we cut, cut through something important. Big sad, big mad, big rip. I wonder if I could return this. Got it on eBay. <laughs> Probably not. I went ahead and bought another boost gauge online. That's like a, it's like a, what do they call it? A shift light style. So it's a long, skinny style of boost gauge. So I think it's gonna be a lot easier to fit. If anyone else has done this mod, can you drop a comment below with the link to where you bought the gauge so we don't have to try this 40 more times. We need to figure out a temporary solution though for a boost gauge. Because I have the one that was in the car but it wasn't really working and I don't trust it at all. Do I, have a, I wonder if I have a manual, I might have a manual boost gauge around here, that'd be ideal. We got a manual boost gauge chilling in here. I might mount it, I don't have a pod for it but I don't mind it just laying here. But yeah, a little manual gauge. We can wire it up if we want it to be lit up, but I don't really care. As long as I can see what it's sitting for boost while we're tuning, I will be happy. There's one more thing we need to take care of real quick. I think I was saying yesterday, or on yesterday's video, that I want to have a little coolant expansion tank sitting right here. Be a super clean setup, there's plenty of space, and it'd really free up everything over here. And we could get rid of this kind of janky looking line, but we don't have, a cap, we don't have a coolant expansion tank yet that will fit right there. And we're having a problem with this one. It's filling all the way up and it's not sucking anything back into the radiator when it cools down. As you can see, she's topped off. And the reason for that is we need to add a hose right here that goes down into the expansion tank. When coolant heats up, it expands. That's the point of the expansion tank. But when it cools back down, it should suck it back through that line back into the radiator. And it's not doing that because this guy is not long enough. So I'm just gonna grab a hose, make it long enough to reach nearly the bottom of that tank and we should be good there. I was worried that this thing was pushing coolant already. And then I saw that. I'm gonna go hit a little rip around the block and see what we hit for PSI now that we have like the six, it was it six or seven PSI springs in the wastegate. If we can get it like under 20 PSI and then work from there, I think that's what we're after right now. Looks like we hit about 13 PSI, maybe a little bit more, but it's better than 36. I didn't think it would make that big of a difference, but apparently it did. I'll log that and I'll send that to Chag. And then if we need to increase wastegate pressure later on, we can easily do that. It takes two minutes with how our wastegate is set up currently. All right, we're down in Mexico again. Thankfully it's a pretty, uh, pretty short drive from where we live to Mexico. to 
monitor everything as I'm trying to do a poll. I'm trying to data log currently, monitor AFRs and monitor boosts and the boost gauges on the floor. So I'm just trusting that we're safe. I'll send these logs over and see what happens. We have one more poll to do. Hopefully all goes as planned. I don't know what's more nervous or nerve wracking. The first startup or doing all these rippers when like it's everything's so new, it's kind of sketchy. That was freaking beautiful. A black F80, bam. Why are you so lean? No, nope. regulator hose is all on there. Everything's good there. Maybe she just needs a little more fuel. I'm gonna shoot those logs over real quick. At least we got the boost under control. That was the main thing. I think from here on out, it should be pretty easy. I may have to adjust fuel pressure, but we'll see. We definitely have a little something on the windshield. Uh, I think it's oil because it smears around like oil. And I'm pretty sure it's coming from, it's like all over the valve cover too. I think, so there's two holes on this valve cover that are like broken out all the way through. And I know one of them is over there because we have a little plug in it. I'm pretty sure this one right here as well is punched all the way through. So I need to plug that. I don't see anything else going on. I'm gonna let it completely cool down. We need to check the fluids. This car, this car's scaring me. And I think it's cause I'm, I'm like so nervous with this car because we did so much work on it. And I'm expecting, for some reason I'm expecting something to go wrong. When I shouldn't be, but I am. So yeah, let's let it cool down and check the oil. Just probably check the coolant. I'm just waiting for something to break. I know the training is not gonna hold. 
I mean, I shouldn't say that. That's bad luck. I have a feeling the tranny is not going to hold. Especially if we go E85. This car on E85 would be dumb, though. Like, too much. Jared's coming here right now to bring me internet so I can actually send logs over fast. I'm going to bring him for a ride. And let's see what he thinks. Because maybe I'm just overreacting. While we're waiting for this thing to cool down, there's like three kind of weird electrical issues with the car that I kind of want to start sifting through. So issue number one, as you guys know, is the ABS slash ACD system. All the lights are on. We got to figure that out. I kind of dove into that a few, probably a week ago and I could not diagnose it. So I'm going to save that for like a different day when I'm not more focused on getting this thing tuned. Number two is turn on the ignition. We have nothing coming from our HVAC. So I'm not sure if it's a blown fuse. We'll figure that out here in a second. And then number three is the right side tail light. I know you guys keep saying, or I mean the left side tail light. I know you guys keep saying fix the right side tail light. The right side's turned off and the lights are off. You turn the lights on, that comes on. For some reason, when the lights are off, this tail light's always on. So I need to figure that out too. That's a super weird issue, which I hope it's easy to fix. But that light works fine. As you guys can see, I'll turn on the lights and she comes on just fine so that's kind of a weird issue we need to figure out i'm going to see if i can't fix this hvac like the blower motor not coming on i'm gonna check the fuses real quick all right fuse number five was popped so i'm gonna put a new fuse in it and i'm guessing that will fix a problem i hope i'm trying to think smart with these electrical problems a lot of times i would uh i like to dig in and try to figure out the most complicated scenario and go that route but a lot of times it's the fuse. Mm. One issue down, two to go. Also, Chag just got back to me. Car's on 28 PSI right now and it's ripping, like I mentioned. I don't know how high we're going, but it sounds like he wants to push it quite a bit further. And we're getting a little bit of knock. He's wondering what my plug gap's at. I'm pretty sure we're at 020. And he said go down to around 018. So we're gonna do that. Make sure our plugs look good. And then if we can clean up this knock that we're getting, we're gonna push it a little bit further. 28 PSI though. I don't even, I'm really curious to see what the 10 is on pump gas, PSI wise. So it's the 526 run, 26 and a half pounds, but different motor. Different setup. Okay, just found a problem. And I kind of forgot about this problem. Um, with the coil and plug systems, you always want to pull the whole setup off after you wash the car because all that white right there, that's water that was sitting in that spark plug hole. And I'm sure it kind of corroded that plug. So we need to pull those plugs out. I'm not, I think I'm just gonna throw new plugs in it. We gotta get all that cleaned off and then throw some dielectric grease on there. Gap the plugs properly. We should be ready for another rip. Two days working on it. Okay, so the HVAC, the blower motor didn't work, right? Yeah. And now it's a blowing fuse, so I put a new fuse in it. Yeah. And now the ABS lights off and the ECD works. Dude, hell yeah. I didn't even change it. What? Is the tail light fixed too? No, the tail light's not fixed. I am so confused. I thought I checked all the fuses. I thought I checked all the fuses. Dude, that's sick though. Bro, I was so worried about that. I spent so long on it. What else could it have been? I don't know. It's always it's always something it's easy. Always something it's always so Not always, but thankfully this time. Well, hopefully it stays working. I mean, like the, you can click through it now. The ABS, like everything's what? Sick. 
I'm so lost. All right, well, I'm gonna go rip it. You wanna come? Hell yeah. Jared thinks his car's slow right now, I think. Let's go rip it. Mm. Did you really ask me if I wanna rip it? A rip in it? Do you wanna drive it? Fuck no. <laughs> It'll explode it, probably. Yeah. That's what, that, that'll be when the rod goes through. Hey, don't be saying that now. <laughs> now we got H beams in here, all right? No I beams. I'm so lost. I wonder if it's gonna bleed fine now. So how do you tell, is it basically like if the light's working and the system's working or could the light be working and it's not actually changing modes? Like how do you tell? See, I don't really know because usually when like something's up with the ECD system, it'll all, uh, as far as I know, it'll kick the EBS light as well. And then- Oh, you have a remote? I just swap it out. Oh. Whatever car's in and out of something. But then I'll put all three lights on as well on the ECD. Gotcha. So now, but so I mean, now it should it's, be fixed. Hopefully, it's fixed now. Mm -hmm. It was lost. I love that sound. done tuning the blue eight for the day chags all finished up we're not quite done tuning the car i think that last pull is around 27 psi so we need to swap and that's the most we can get out of it right now so we need to swap the wastegate springs and i'm not sure how far he's trying to go it kind of sounds like he's you know 200 to 300 psi <laughs> sounds reasonable yeah let's look at the log real quick so 25 26 26 pounds was the most we hit how did it feel? But Dino said it feels good. Was it a ripper? Mm -hmm. Definitely faster, a ripper. Faster than your car? Just a little bit. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. We'd have to line them up, see what happens. We should, we should, that'd be funny. Well, we're, we're probably gonna finish tuning that car maybe Monday. Maybe tomorrow. I don't know if he works on the weekends or not. Does he, Jared? Do you remember? Fuck, we gotta wait till Monday. But tonight we're actually pulling out the FRS. We need to get the car cleaned up and we're actually having a video shoot with a local Spokane videographer. So I'm really excited to see how that turns out. So yeah, all done tuning the Evo. She's a ripper. We didn't really have any problems with it. And I'm curious to see if that ABS and the ACD system is gonna be fixed now. All we have left to figure out is that tail light. And if anyone has any suggestions on what is going on. So basically with the lights off, the right or the left side tail lights on, 
and then you turn the lights on and then the right side is brighter than the left side. It's super weird. I'm not sure what's going on there. Drop a comment below if you have any ideas. Let's pull out the FRS, the stance boy, get it cleaned up, waiting on Bobby, and then we can go to this video shoot. You blew smoke. What? I like your smoke you just puffed out. Did I? Little, there's just a little baby puff. Blue or black? I don't know. I think it was red. Yeah. Oh, so he says bye to you, but not to me? Yeah, apparently. Let's see how it is, Jared. All right, we got the FRS all cleaned up, boys. Bobby's here. We're gonna go do this thing. Where are we going? Downtown to Davenport. Ah, the good old FRS. Let's see how fast this boy is. Damn, bro. That's a clean STI. That looks good. If it would just halt, come back here. That looks so good. I know, I love it. Do I have to have a hatch? So we're here at a very, very, probably the most elegant hotel in Spokane. <laughs> I don't freaking like when you say the word elegant. <laughs> uh, we got Mitchell out here, he's shooting the video. Taking those bangers. We got Bobby. I wish she would be the model, but she's, for some reason, doesn't want to be on the vlog or the in the video. I don't think that's a part of the process he has going. Like his vision is not with me. It's with me? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna be in the in a video shoot, so I'm wearing some crusty ass shoes. This is the rest of my outfit. Crust on crust. On Straight crust. out of the shop, working on Evos. It is what it is. So I'm not sure exactly what's planned, but this is the start. And it's big. And look at that, though. Sorry. Beautiful sunset. Beautiful. Very elegant. I'm not sure when this video is gonna be done, but if it's allowed, I'm gonna throw it in one of the vlogs either tonight or this video, or maybe like an upcoming video, depending on when it's all finished up, so you guys can see and check it out. Did you do a good job driving? I did. Bobby was the driver of the FRS as we were doing rollers, and she killed it. Shout out to Bob. Thanks. Yes, so we're all done shooting. I'm excited for the video. I think he said it'll be done around like Monday. So in a few days for you guys, you're gonna see it and I'm excited. It's gonna look sick. It's gonna be a wrap for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Chag, tuned. Thank you for tuning my my car. Really appreciate it. If you guys wanna use Chag, a little FYI, a little tidbit of information, he gets back to you super fast. So I think we did eight or nine revisions on the Evo, which is impressive. Seeing how I had to drive all around town to find Wi-Fi until Jared brought me some Wi-Fi. So if you guys want to use Chag, amazing tuner, very, very excellent customer service. I'll have a link down below. And I think I'm gonna bring Bobby for a rip tomorrow and get her reaction because this thing's hauling balls. It's not even done yet, but it's safe enough to rip on. So you guys will probably see that video next. Hope you enjoyed, peace out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Last night, Bobby gave me a very, very unfair gapping in her STI when I was in, this, in the Evo. Tonight, I'm gonna give her some payback, guys. Now that she's kinda tuned, give her the gap. Oh, oh my gosh. This thing rips. 
Let's see what Bob's got to say about that one. <laughs> You got the gap. No, I would have won if your turbo was on. All right, I'll give you a head start. No. Go. So what's up? <laughs> what's your, well, what's your I, reasoning? Did you get gapped? No. What? I literally did not. <laughs> I know it may seem, it may look like that, but technically, hey, look at all the cars. Bobby, I gave you like probably 10 car lengths of a head start. Baby, your car is so freaking loud. Every time I go down to shift, it pierces my ears. Literally pierces my eardrums. So did you lose or win? Well, maybe. <laughs> Let's just go. Inside. I'm over this. You're over it. Just wait till my car's fast. It's okay to get gapped once in a while. You you got me last night. It's only right I pay you back. Oh.